Hey everyone, Jason here to show you the stroke panel in Adobe Illustrator. We've got lots of different examples and so many things that you can do with the stroke panel. First of all, you'll need some shapes opened or closed on your artboard, and then you'll need to go under your window menu and call up your stroke panel. When you call up your stroke panel, it may be a little short panel. You've got to click on the cheese grater, go under show options so you can see everything that's under your stroke panel in order to make it work. I also have my appearance panel and my properties panel, all of which I can go under my view menu or my window menu, call up appearance and get my properties and my appearance panel working just like I should. Okay, so I have a basic shape. It's a square. I've got an orange stroke on it. In the stroke panel, I can control the weight of the stroke, either from the drop down menu, typing in a value, or put the cursor in the field and then just use my up or down arrow to adjust the size of the stroke. I have three different attributes that I can apply to a stroke. A cap, a corner, and then deal with the alignment of the stroke. The pictures say what's actually going on with this shape. And when you look at the cap here, the caps require an open-ended line. You see how the point ends right here? So if I have an open-ended line or shape, I can apply the cap. This will not work on a closed shape. The first and the standard is going to be this simply the butt cap. And it, the stroke weight just simply goes to the end of the line length and then stops. The second one is going to be the rounded, which I call hot dogging the ends. And this is going to give me a hot dog shape. The third is going to be a projecting cap. Now, what does this actually look like? Well, I'm going to go into the view menu. I'm going to go into outline mode, which is command or control Y. And you're going to see that the length of the line here is shown right here in outline mode. I'm going to do my command or control Y and I'm going to come back and you'll notice that with a projecting cap, it actually projects the stroke weight around the end of the line. As I increase the weight of the line, that projecting cap will also go longer. So why would I use a projecting cap rather than just the butt cap? Well, here's a perfect example. I've got this shape which I've drawn here in an outline mode using my command or control Y. You can see that the end and the start points as well as this horizontal are all on the exact same plane. However, when I use my command or control Y and go into preview, the stroke does not look like it actually comes down to that same level. And the reason why is because the line goes around and it doesn't project that distance at the end. If I do the projecting cap, this makes it all look like it's sitting on the baseline. Pretty slick. Now, I can't do a butt cap or a rounded cap or hot dogging the ends or the projecting cap on a closed shape. Why? Because there's no open point. So caps do not work on a closed shape. But if I were to go in here and do it on an open shape, sure, there it is, hot dog the ends, project the caps, or just have a butt cap on there, okay? Caps require an open shape. Next is the corners. And all I have to have is some place where lines meet at a corner. This can be an opened or closed shape. Right now I have square corners. I can have rounded corners. But what I want to make very clear here is I am not actually rounding the shape. I am only rounding the stroke. Do you notice how the stroke is rounded here, but it is not rounded on the inside? Rounding the stroke only rounds the outside of the stroke. It does not round the shape. This is a rounded shape. Okay, You can see that I have a radius on the inside and the outside here. This is just rounding the stroke. If I do the bevel or the angle right there, you can see that it only does the stroke. The shape itself, when I go into outline mode using command and control Y, it has not changed the shape of the stroke. It's only changing the corner of the stroke itself. Okay, We're going to get to the limit here in a second, but I want to show you the next thing is the alignment of the stroke. Now the aligned stroke only works on a closed shape. By default, when you have a stroke, it is going to apply the amount of stroke weight equally inside as a, and outside of the stroke. A 30-point stroke, I will have 15 points of weight inside my shape, 15 points outside. When I go to Command or Control Y, you'll see that the shape looks just like it's indicated by my align here, but the stroke is inside and outside. That's the default, is aligning to the center of the shape. 
if I have the stroke on the inside, no stroke will appear on the outside of the line. And as I increase the amount of stroke, it's going to look like my shape center is getting smaller. It's because the shape is not allowing that stroke to go outside. If the inside of your shape is what you want to have clear, I can set that to the outside. And then any amount of stroke that I put on here will only be applied to the outside of the stroke. This does not work on any open shape because it doesn't matter where the center line is. It has to be a closed shape. You'll notice that these are grayed out. It's an open shape, quite simple. I'm going to show you what the miter limit is. And I'm going to show you this on an angle. So I'm going to draw a star here. And I've got all these points of the star. And I can change the corner strokes here very easily by rounding or beveling the ends to get different styles. I'm going to jump over to my direct selection tool and I'm going to directly select a singular point. I'm going to pull that point out and you'll notice that point now becomes a blunt end. Well, why? Well, the reason why is because this angle has now decreased and Illustrator doesn't know what to do with it. Right now, the miter limit has been set to 10 and I don't know what this number actually means. All I know is that the tighter the angle, meaning the further you pull that point out, the higher this number needs to be. I don't know what the magic number is, so I select my point, I put my cursor inside the miter limit field, and I use my up arrow until presto change o, all of a sudden, that point forms. So if you are ever pulling a point and it turns from a point to a blunt cap, you set the miter limit higher on that particular point and you get the actual point. So that's something that's really important to know. Now let's go into our dashed lines. Our dashed lines here, we have to have an open line. So actually, no, we don't have to have an open line. We can have any shape, open or closed. In order to have the arrowheads, we need an open line. I'm going to click on the dashed lines. And here we can have fields that allow us to set the length of our dash and the length of our gap. I'm going to set my line weight back down to 10 points, and it now has a dash of 14 points. You notice how I don't have to put any values in all of these. If I put the dash of 14, it's automatically going to assume that the gap is going to be 14 points as well. But say I'd like to go in and I'd like to put a different value in here, say 24. Okay, Now that's going to give me a dash of 14 and a gap of 24. Why do I have all these other fields? Well, this is if I want to create a line that is going to have a variation between the gaps and the dashes. Here, now I can get some irregular line. I don't need to fill those all in with the same repeating numbers. As long as I want the exact same, all I need to do is fill in the first two fields and everything else is going to simply repeat. If I'd like to have something different, that's when I'm going to fill in these fields. If you get rid of this third field, it will then go ahead and get rid of all the other fields. Okay, Get rid of the gap field, and then your dash and your gap are going to be exactly the same. Now, what is this with line lengths here? Well, let me show you. I'm going to take this shape, and I'm going to apply a dashed line to it. Dashed line, there we go. Now, I have it so that the corners and the dashes are going to adjust. And you'll notice that the width of these dashes is a little bit shorter than the width of these. But I said I want the dash to be 14 points. Well, let me go back to this other one that's going to preserve the actual length. And then you'll notice that the corners don't meet up where they should. They're a little bit off. I don't get the rounded corners and things like that. That's because of my shape is not exactly equally divisible by 14 points. So here I can align them so it makes it look like the dashes are going to be as close as possible to what I've set here in the dash, and it's going to balance it out. And when you have corners, that's a really nice thing to have. So that's really smart. Now here's one crazy feature on how to do a dotted line. And this does not make any sense whatsoever. Illustrator does not have a dotted line all by itself. It just has lines that you control the dash. How do you do a dotted line? Well, the way you do a dotted line is you set your line weight, okay? And then you hot dog the ends or you round the caps, okay? So you do the rounded cap. And then what you're going to do is you're going to set the dash length to zero. And you're like, what? Zero? Why would I set this to zero? Well, what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and you set it to zero and you're like, no, I get a solid line. Ah, but wait. 
I'm going to put a gap in here and hit return. Now I get a dotted line. How did that happen? Well, when I set this gap or the rounded cap here and the gap to zero, I'm actually getting two caps, a left hot dog end and a right hot dog end, basically a half a circle put together. If I set the dash length to anything more than a zero, what's going to happen is they're going to become slightly elongated. So a dotted line is literally two hot dog tips put together with a dash length of zero. But the gap is very important because that's going to control the length between what looks like dots. Okay, how's that for crazy cool? Well, it's interesting nonetheless. Arrowheads. Well, any open path can have arrowheads. You have a list of starts and finishes, lots of arrowheads, pointers, things like that. And you can apply an arrow to something. Let me grab just a simple arrow right there. Oh my gosh, that's huge. Well, I'm going to scale that arrowhead down so it's nice and small. Then I can put a tail on there as well if I'd like. Some type of shape. There we go. And I can also control that. If I'd like to control the scale of the arrowheads and tails together, I link them together. If I would like to do them separately, I simply unlink. I can simply flop the direction of these items by clicking the reverse right there, and it swaps the heads or tails. Now with the alignment, how would you like to align these? Well, this is going to the very ends of the lines here, but I could actually put those so they extend a little bit further here, so the length of the line then adds the arrowheads of tails to the end, whereas kind of incorporating them into the end, okay? Your choice of alignment. Now this may make a little bit more sense. I'm going to grab my direct selection tool and I'm going to select a portion of this shape here and simply delete it. Now you'll notice when I delete this shape, the section of the shape, my stroke alignment went to the center because I can't have an open shape and have the stroke aligned to the inside or outside. There is no inside or outside with an open shape. But when I go in and I do my arrowheads here, you'll notice, oh, that's huge. I'm going to cut that down to say 25%. And right now, I get a three-quarter circle, but it doesn't really look like a three-quarter circle because the arrow, the point of the arrowhead is finishing up at the three-quarter mark. But if I select this shape and say, hey, align it to the end there, that looks a little bit more believable as a three-quarter circle. Something to think about. Now, I also have my appearance panel and my properties panel up here. And the reason why I have these up is because the appearance panel allows you to adjust the stroke and you can adjust the color of the stroke right here in the appearance panel, something you can't do in the stroke panel. But I can adjust the size and I can call up my stroke link, which is going to basically bring up the quick stroke panel that I have here. I like that because it's got the actual color. Now the properties panel will also have a section for the appearance as well, where I can control the stroke and it too will pop up the stroke panel. And I can simply select the color, call up my color palette very quickly, apply a stroke to it, or mix my own colors right there from that as well. And then I can simply adjust the size of my stroke panel there. So lots of different ways that you can go in and adjust the stroke of items and apply different attributes to them. A lot of cool stuff that goes on with a stroke panel and a couple weird things like the dotted line. But I'm going to guess that there was a few tips in here that really blew your mind. So check out my other videos and we'll see you next time.